Hello, my name is Xavier, and in this video I'm going to go over floating licenses for our desktop software, specifically the local network version. The content in this video is applicable to both Map Publisher and Geographic Imager. First we're going to discuss what a floating license is and how it works. Then we're going to go over the process of setting up a floating license, and lastly managing the license server. Hopefully this video will help you understand the local network, floating license server, and whether it's appropriate for your organization's needs. Now let's talk about what a floating license is. This option may be more appropriate for your organization than multiple fixed licenses, since fixed licenses will always be registered with one specific machine, and you may need to have multiple users accessing the software on different machines, but not at the same time. This graphic will help better explain what a floating license server is. All the computers, computers A, B, C, and D, can have the map publisher or geographic imager software installed. However, the floating license server will limit access to the number of computers that can be licensed at any given time. For example, if your organization only needs to ever access two licenses at the same time, then computer A and B can access at the same time, but C and D will not be able to. We can consider the licenses as seats. Since A and B are using a seat each, then C and D will need to wait until one of those seats becomes available before they can use it. When one computer is done using the software, they can check it in, thus making a seat available. Additionally, there isn't a limit to the number of computers that can have the software installed. The limiting factor is just the number of seats available. You could have 100 computers with Map Publisher or Geographic Imager installed, but if you only have two seats, then only two of those 100 computers can use it at once. Another benefit to the system is you don't need to dedicate certain computers to using the software, since any computer can technically access it. We offer two options for floating licenses. The first is setting up your own server on your own computer, and it will be a local network server, and the machines need to be on the same network in order to connect to it. This was the only option before. The second option is RLM Cloud, which is available on Map Publisher 10.7 or newer, or Geographic Imager 6.3 or newer. Today I'm going to discuss floating licenses being set up on a local network that will act as the server-side machine. These are the most common types of servers since we've just launched, launched RLM Cloud Floating Licensing, which will be the topic of my next video to discuss how they work and how they're different. We use a license managing software called Reprise License Management, also known as RLM. Local network floating license servers require you to install the RLM software onto your own machine. The machine will then effectively become the server. Therefore, the machine you decide to install the server on should be accessible and on the same network as the machines you plan to install Map Publisher or Geographic Imager on. That being said, if there is a computer that you wish to use that's not on the network, you can set up a VPN that will allow computers on another network to connect to the same network as the server. This is beneficial for organizations that have employees who work remotely. The software to begin this process can be found in our product documentation. There will be a link in the description. In the article, there's also a link to download RLM. Additionally, there are instructions for certain commands that you need to run, which will include the information we need to create a license file. This license file is used to tell RLM what software you have licensed, how many seats, and what version of the software you're limited to, in addition to your server details. The license file is important because when there's new releases for our software, you can request a new license file to be updated to the newest version. The license file is also important if you want to make changes to the server machine or change the machine completely. The license file will only contain details for one machine's information, therefore you will need to fill out a rehost form to change machines. There are certain elements you can change within the license file that will allow you to customize the license file for your network. Before I go over that, I'd like to clarify how the RLM server works. Essentially, when you set up an RLM server, it will use three ports. Two ports will be static, port 5053 and 5054, and one will change whenever the server is restarted. Port 5053 will be used to license the software to the client machine. When inputting server information, 5053 is the port that needs to be used on the client side. Port 5054 is used to access the server's GUI. It can be accessed by the IP address of the server machine, colon 5054, 
or server name of the machine colon 5054 inside of an internet browser. It does need to be connected to the same network as the machine. The GUI can be used to see the server status and devices in a more aesthetically pleasing and easier manner rather than running commands in command prompt. The last port will change each time the server is restarted and it can be on any port on the network. Please be aware when you set up the floating license server, you can run into different issues if your organization has firewall or security protocols or certain ports close. To run the RLM server, the three ports that are needed are 5053, 5054, and a dynamic port. And those need to be open in order to communicate with client-side machines. Therefore, if your server requires regular restarts, I recommend that you hard code the port which I'll discuss next. Customizing the port in the license file is one of the few things you can edit on your end. The license file will contain of three lines, the host line, ISV, and license, which you can see on screen. If you'd like to change the port for the client side, you can open up the .lic file, also known as the license file, in a text editor like Notepad++. Then on the host line, you can hard code the port you want just by typing the numbers after the machine ID. In this example, it's 1234. If you'd like to change the port for the license server that changes each time it's restarted, you can hard, co hard code that as well by typing port equals 1234 in the ISV line. Once you have the license file customized to your network's needs, all you need to do is restart your floating license server, and you can choose to run your server as a service or as an executable. The executable will need to be manually run each time the server is turned off or restarted. However, if it's set up as a service, it will automatically run whenever the machine is turned on. Again, you can follow our documentation. It'll show you how to set it up as a service, and the link is also included in the description. Now, when the server is up and running and your client machine is on the same network, all you need to do is open the license management window in Map Publisher or Geographic Imager and input the server details. Within Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, users can license the product by opening the license management window. On Map Publisher, it can be accessed following these steps Adobe Illustrator, Help, Map Publisher Licensing, License Management, Floating. And on Geographic Imager, it can be accessed two ways either through Adobe Photoshop, Geographic Imager Panel, Contextual Menu, License Management, Floating, or Adobe Photoshop, File, Automate. GI license management floating. From there, click on local network, input the server name or IP address and the port. The port will default to 5053, but if you've hard coded a different port to something else, you'll need to change it. Now your users should be up and running on their machines. When they're done using the software and someone else needs to use it, all they need to do is close the software and it'll automatically check the license back in so another can use it. If they want to stay within Illustrator or Photoshop and they just want to check in the license, they only need to open the license management window and click the check in button. Next, I'll discuss rehosts. Rehosts are for when you need to link the license key to a different machine. For example, if you get a new computer and want to change the server to that machine instead, or if the license was hosted to the wrong machine ID, you can change the machine ID that the license is associated with. To do so, you'll need to get the requisite information from the machine by running the RLM util commands from the article I mentioned earlier. The link is in the description. Then you can access the rehost request form on our website and our activation team will be able to provide a new license. Rehosts are included in maintenance or there's a 25 US dollar fee per rehost for non-maintenance subscribers. To access the form, you go to the Avenza website hover over knowledge and support, product activation, and scroll down to rehost license for maintenance subscribers. Lastly, if you need the newest version of Map Publisher or Geographic Imager for your floating license server, 
and you have maintenance, you can request a free upgrade. The license file provided by our activation team from the initial setup of your floating license server will include the most current version of that software. However, in the future, when we release newer versions, the floating license server will still be locked to that version of Map Publisher or Geographic Imager and previous versions before that. For example, if your license works with Map Publisher 10.7, you can use it for Map Publisher 10.7, 10.6, 10.5, and so on. But it won't work with Map Publisher 10.8. To quest this license, you can follow the steps on screen and fill out the license upgrade form, and you'll be sent a new license file for your server. You, click, you can click on Knowledge and Support, Product Activation, and scroll down to request new license for upgrade. If you continue to have issues or have any questions about the licensing server, feel free to reach out to our support team at support.avenza.com through our form. Thank you for watching and we hope this helps.